Well, <laughs> threats posed by rising sea levels and extreme weather patterns are changing the way California's coastal communities plan for the future. Craig Miller has the story in a Climate Watch conversation. When you add up all the bays and inlets, California has more than 3,400 miles of shoreline, several hundred just in the Bay Area. As the head of the Coastal Services Center for the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, Margaret Davidson has her eye firmly on the future of all this shoreline and the threats imposed from rising seas and more extreme weather. Davidson is based in South Carolina, but is a close watcher of California where coast and climate may be on a collision course. Now, when I talk to uh, climatologists about the specific climate threats to California, they usually mention two things first, you know, water supply issues mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. sea level rise. The trouble with sea level rise is that it's happening very slowly. It's tough to motivate people. It has been happening very slowly. It's been happening on a geological time scale, which is, of course, very slow. Uh, we're seeing a, a fairly rapid acceleration of rates in the last hundred years, but that's still slow to a normal person's perception. Uh, but in the last 10 to 15 years, thought to be associated with things like the uh, uh, melting of the Greenland ice sheet uh, in places where it would be first to register, like the mid-Atlantic U.S., we've seen a dramatic rate of acceleration in sea level rise, relative sea level rise. The sea level rise, it's mm -hmm. an insidious thing, yes, you know, yes. uh, people can't really see it happening. Yes. But I think a lot of times what they don't get is it's not just the rising sea levels, it's right. that in combination with the weather, the tides right. and everything yes. else that's happening, yes. paint that scenario for us. Well, it's actually not the rate of local sea level rise per se that is the concern. It is the degree to which that amount of water on top of the volume that we have been knowing is going to contribute to increased, more frequent uh, episodes of flooding and more extensive flooding. And we're already seeing that in certain uh, portions of the Bay Area. And then if you also combine this with changes in uh, winter precipitation patterns and, and early snow melt, uh, it's now happening a month to two months earlier than it used to. And, and that's going to be a confounding problem under a variety of conditions, some of which are distinctly related to local sea level and some of which are related to changing patterns in, in rainfall. And we do have one of those triggers here, the so-called Pineapple Express, mm -hmm. what they call atmospheric rivers. Yes. Uh, these one storm right after another coming off the Pacific. That's the big fear, really, especially for places like Sacramento, which, are, which is well inland. That old uh, axiom about the butterfly who flaps its wings in Borneo uh, is actually real because m the world's big weather maker used to be boiling up out of those very dense forests on that island that we used to call Borneo, and they sweep across the Pacific, and that drives the weather for the whole continental U.S., is that really big weather coming into the West Coast. And of course, we've, we've changed those patterns of weather. We've uh, logged much of uh, Borneo. Uh, we've also changed the cycles of the uh, warm, cool ocean, the whole El Nino, La Nina thing. Uh, but we're seeing really big weather patterns that we had not seen before. And, and like we were just seeing recently, uh, that can shift to the south a great deal. And, and California suddenly becomes a whole lot wetter in a very short period of time than it's used to. There's a plan in development right now uh, here in the Bay Area for an area known as Ocean Beach yes. uh, in San Francisco, aptly enough, because it's the part of San Francisco right. that fronts right on the Pacific, takes the yes. full brunt of it. Uh, for a long-range erosion management plan, they're actually talking about taking a major thoroughfare called the Great Highway, right. picking it up and moving it inland. I mean, how, how much of this are you seeing around the country, and is it uh, is that really the kind of thing we're looking at? Well, I, I certainly think in the case of uh, Ocean Beach, which I understand is a highly erosive environment, that if you actually want to have this pocket urban beach and its amenities in the future, you're going to have to give it room to move, as it were. Well, that project um, uh, might add up, uh, from what I've seen, to $100 million. Yes. And that's just to deal with a very tiny slice of the California coast. You look at what would have to be done 
all up and down the coast yes. and in the bays and inlets yes. of California. Yes. You're talking about more than 800 miles of coastline. Uh, the costs coming at us are costs that we haven't had to face before either. Even as we think about reinvesting in public infrastructure in this country, which we we should do, uh, and in fact we must do if we think we want to remain uh, economically competitive in the world markets, uh, I'm hoping that we will have the sensibility to also think about the hazard and climate resilience of our infrastructure. So let us not just design our roads and our sewers and our flooding systems for the conditions that we have known. Let us think about how we site and design that critical infrastructure for the conditions that are very likely to occur over the next 30 to 50 years. Margaret Davidson, thanks for taking a few minutes with us. Certainly, Craig. Happy to help.